Hello and welcome to Podcast of a Lincoln Geek. I'm your host, the Podcast General, the Dan Face. Uh, and welcome to listening to our little show about board games and random geeky stuff. As usual, I'm joined by my regular co-host and regular friend. We have the Pete. Say hello, Pete. Hello, Pete. Gone for the classic one there, Pete. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to throw a curveball at you uh, one of these days. Try and make you say something a bit different. Ooh, okay. I'll Another do, catchphrase do, for your collection. See, we can work on that one. Another catchphrase for my collection, yes. There, there we, we go. go. Perfect. <laughs> and we are joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the website monkey, as he calls himself. It's the Gregor. Say hello, Gregor. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. He didn't follow my instructions there, Gregor, but never mind. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you again for tuning into our little show, in case, unless it's just an autoplay, in which case we thank you for not quickly swiping to another channel before <laughs> uh, this one gets started. Uh, today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, filler games. What's the best filler game? So what's the definition of a filler game? A filler game is basically a short, simple, easy to learn game. So I, I tend to think of these as um, games while you're waiting for people to arrive for the main event, mm. or perhaps you want uh, something just kind of nice and light and breezy to start the day with. Uh, the day of gaming, of course, or the other end, you've just had a big epic Battlestar Galactica marathon. I had to chuck it in there. <laughs> uh, and you're tired, you're, but people don't want to go home yet. They're finishing their mm -hmm. drinks. You've got 10, 15 minutes left. What are you going to play? So I, I'm a big fan of lists. I love lists. <laughs> Did you keep this, a list of how many times people have been sus in games as well? I, I am that sad, yes. <laughs> that is correct. I do have an Excel spreadsheet indicating our sus ratio of... Uh, <laughs> just because I not, have a, not a public on... Excel spreadsheet, not a public one. No, no, it's my uh, just my own private collection. <laughs> 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 I can put it on the Google Drive if you want, so I can have transparency. Ooh, you know, yeah, you could. So, yeah, there we go. So I can't be accused of fudging the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, anyway, yes, I have a sheet. Just to, okay, I'm like, I'm not sus. Look, I'm only 37 percent sus in this game. Not, you know. <laughs> um. Yeah, 63% innocent. Yeah. <laughs> I think the maths works out on that. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> that means, so that means that you've only done one in every three murders. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's barely any compared to the people I hang out with. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so if you like, we're just going to start. We'll go clockwise. Pete, are you ready uh, for number three? I think it, it could be fun if we have a little guess of what we're going to say. Yeah. Uh, I think Pete is going to say, though I disagree, and probably not a filler game. Uh, bang, because it can go on a little while. I'm going to guess you could, you might be going for something like Bang or Resistance for your number three. Um, uh, do you have any guesses, Gregor, or do you have no, literally no clue? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, I feel like them. Part of me is tempted to say that there might be more social deduction focused things. Yeah, like who, for example. Coup, yeah. But on the other hand, I know that Pete's relationship with not telling the <laughs> truth is uh, <laughs> she struggles with it at the best of times. So I don't know whether they will make it's, it onto the list. It's so only the, the hidden loyalty ones. It's only the hidden loyalty ones he's kind of uncomfortable with. If, if, mm. if it's all against all, I think you're generally okay with them, aren't you, Pete? If everyone's yeah, against yeah. each other, uh, it's like bluffing games. And yeah. then you'll be all right. I mean, you do like resistance, though. I mean, we were talking about it earlier, so I wonder if that's on your mind. So I'm going to say resistance for your number three. Okay. Um, actually, to be fair, Gregor, uh, Coup is a fantastic suggestion, and I forgot to grab it from my shelf. I didn't think of it. It's <laughs> actually a game Dan introduced me to, Skulls. Skull. Brilliant. Good choice. Yeah. Um, so the very, very, the, the very, um, the very rough um, gist of the game is um, everyone's got. Uh, a tile in front of them that's usually got, uh, uh, they're like, like, like a home tile, I guess you could call it. And they have four actual tiles, three of which are flowers, one of which are skulls. The aim of the game is for every player to put down, face down, either a flower or a skull, and then make a call of how many flowers they can find across the entire table. So if Dan, Gregor, and I were to play and I was player one, I'd maybe put, well, you all put down one tile first, I forgot to mention. And then afterwards, we can either put down another tile or say, I'm going to find X. So I could maybe put down a flower, put another flower down and say, I can find two flowers. And then Dan might, who might have put, say, another a flower, go, I can find three. Gregor might pass. And then because Dan's won the, well, you know, I, I, I would then be asked if I want to bet, bet, bid higher, but I, I don't know what other people would put down, so I might have backed down. Dan would then maybe go, I've got one flower, Pete's got two, I win the round. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a nutshell, Pete, it's basically it's a, a, a kind of a bluffing bidding game, isn't yes. it? So you, can, you kind of bid how many flowers you think you can find, 
while mm. avoiding the skulls. Uh, and obviously, there's there's two ways of winning. Uh, you can be literally win two, just two points. That's all you need to get, mm -hmm. isn't it? So you need to correctly guess the number of flowers twice, <laughs> or be the last player standing. Because if people pick a skull, including yourself, if you pick mm -hmm. your own skull, uh, then you lose the life essentially, which is one of your cards, and that kind of speeds the game up because there's less yeah. cards to play. Um. It's a good choice, though. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's one of my favourite uh, kind of light bluffing games ever, and it only lasts about I'd say 15, 20 minutes, depending on how long yeah. the game goes. What do you reckon? No, I'd say about that. I mean, depends how turtling people are, because um, I will admit <laughs> I do tend to rely too much on the. I'm just going to put the skulls down and hope people select me. And unfortunately, people kind of learn not to select me because I, I never pick Pete, regardless. He always <laughs> plays skull on the top. It's just skull, 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 skull. And if he if he bids for anything, I just ignore him. <laughs> just guaranteed skull. <laughs> to be fair, I think part of the reason that because I won my very first game by just by just. By just by whittling away everyone else, I actually won from being the last person standing. So yeah. I think that's kind of my my um my my, my robotic mindset go my, my robotic mindset even uh goes, well, I won doing this way, therefore I must always do this way to win. <laughs> and the AI is slowly learning, hmm. Tr trouble is we've learned your programming, Pete. We now yeah. know just to avoid you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just so the quickest way of winning is just getting two bids. You, uh, yeah. So you go for the long game of knocking all the other players out. Yeah. Although saying that, I did win the last game we played because uh, I managed to get, get get two bids in. So yeah, there you go. You broke the programming. We weren't, yeah, we weren't expecting programming. <laughs> well, before we take too long on this game, I mean, Greg, yeah. have you played Skull before? I'm sure you have, haven't you? I mean, yes. It once a year yeah, I played it when we did the May the Fourth event. It was one mm -hmm. of our filler games then. Um, that's the first time I played it. Uh, I wasn't very good at it, but it was quite fun. I, I like yeah. that there is a kind of balance between the strategy of who you uh, choose to mm. trust may or may not have placed a flower. Yeah, it's a great game for family as well. This is one I take around to my family mm. at Christmas because it's so simple to teach. There's literally just two cards. <laughs> so this does this this does this it's 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 easy it's great yeah very good shot out there uh Pete. uh so uh gregor we're going to um i know this is a very spontaneous topic so i don't know if you've actually got a number of top three list but what's what would be your number three game i couldn't even hazard a guess with you um you like quite abstracty games don't you like um not not yeah, the, broadly speaking of, yeah not the uh uh, the social deduction ones typically, I'm guessing. Um, I can really hazard a guess though. Do you have any options there, Pete? You reckon you would go for in this top three? Um, not off the top of my head, I will admit. Um, okay, oh, maybe, maybe oh, what was it? that pottery game we played on May the 4th. I think that was quite a good one. I could maybe see that one being on. Gregor's list, unless yeah. in my delirious, um, drowsy state, I misremember to actually own that game. In which case, so you're, you're going for the pottery game. I know yes. you like games like uh, Azul, I think you, you like the kind of the puzzle ones. I'm just mm. going to make massive assumptions about you here, Gregor. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yeah, I don't think I wouldn't class Azul as a filler game, so uh, no, that's, because I haven't that's actually played on. that, so okay, that's mm. fair. Well, uh, I'm going to guess this. So, uh, do you want to put us out of your misery? What would you class as your number three filler game? My number three filler game would be Kitty Cataclysm, which is a <laughs> Stuff by Bez game. Um, okay. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Bez games from... I know we've spoken about them on the live show before. Mm -hmm. um, Bez has popped in, at least in the comments of those in the past. Um, sure. And, yeah, there's lots of Bez games that I could have chosen to put on the list um, mm -hmm. because she makes all sorts of weird little games. Her thing for 2022 was that for every convention she went to in 2022, mm -hmm. she made a game for that convention, a new, a brand new game for that convention, which sure. is an insane project. And they're all wow. little filler game type things um, to do with one of the ones that stands out is... Uh, there's uh, it's a very simple game but it's basically about uh counting cats um mm -hmm. and the way that it works is you've just got a deck of cards where you have some cats uh, colored in different colors and then you flip the card over and it will either have a particular cat drawing on it or a color on it and then you just have to be the first person to slap onto the deck of cards and say the card that was underneath it that it's oh. got however many of that number of cats on it. But that's not the game I'm talking about. That's just another filler game by Bez that <laughs> sprung to mind. Uh, Kitty Cataclysm specifically is a little bit more involved. Um, it's full of cat puns, which are great. Um, and the idea behind it is that you have uh, each, you, you each have a, a hand 
of cards um, and you are trying to put money in your kitty uh, or meowney i think is the term in the game um, perfect and each of the cards <laughs> yes yeah and each of the cards has a, a cap on it and so they all um have a value of meowney on the card <laughs> and you've got to basically there are instructions on each card as well that tell you what you need to do so for example it might say that you need to donate cards to another player or it might say you need to draw cards or something like that the idea is the uh if it comes around to someone's turn and they don't have any cards left in their hand um in their paw sorry i think it's poor. Of course. uh i'm not i'm not at home at the moment otherwise i would be checking that there is an illustration with all the cat puns on it to explain all the the terms um but the uh, yeah the idea is that you pass on that card um so you might donate cards or whatever to try and stop other people from winning the game if you okay. uh, don't have the most meowney or alternatively you want to be trying to get rid of your cards as much as possible if you currently have the most meowney in your kitty um i, I really so... love your commitment to say meowney so many times <laughs> Yeah, well, that's how I feel like I have to explain the game. Right? It's only it's the principle of the thing. Yeah, um, so, so yeah, that's the the idea. It's a very quick game to play. Sometimes it it, it can go on a little bit, but I have played games of it in less than five minutes, which I think makes it a perfect filler game. But people usually oh, wow. get bored with the cap ones. People like the fact that there is uh, often a trade-off. So some of the cards have uh -huh. uh, negative amounts of meow neon, but they might do things like actually if someone has uh, everyone with seven or more cards, for example, has to lose their hand and you uh -huh. gain a mi one, minus one meow -me for that, but actually it's clearing out people who might be hoarding a lot of cards, so that mm. actually if you have a comfortable amount of meow -me, you're looking you to win the it. game. So I think it's really well balanced for like a, a short little game like that, and it's full of cat puns and illustrations and all the sort of fun stuff that you want from a filler game. I'm a massive fan of puns, and I have four mm. cats, so I sound like the target audience for that game, so that sounds pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. I can't really comment any more on it now, because I've never actually played it. Yeah, that same, cool. but no, I wanted to definitely, definitely, definitely one I want to play. Um, just because I, I also love puns and I adore cats, so hey, yeah, we're the target know. audience. <laughs> 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 All right, good shout out there, Gregor. I'll have to give that a Google. All right, my number three, we'll have to speed this up a bit. What do you guys reckon? Any guesses before I quickly announce it? Um, well, I know yeah, how much you love Munchkin, so I'm just going to assume that Munchkin is <laughs> coming up on the list <laughs> at some point. <laughs> hmm, I'm trying to think actually um, I know you and I have a lot, lot of similar games but all the ones yeah. that spring to my mind um, I'm not so sure actually no wait Coup I'm going to go with Coup uh, totally stealing Gregor's suggestion Good from job. earlier I'll go with Coup well, I think I'll give you a hint Pete it's got a soldier it's got a priest it's got a princess any idea it is Love Letter oh Love be... Letter I forgot love letter. I forgot about love letter. Yes, perfect example of a filler game. Each round yes. is literally like two minutes long. <laughs> and yeah. You can play until you get bored of it. It's a really simple, um, kind of not really bluffing, but you've got to try and guess what card the mm. other person is holding. And eventually, as the round goes on, there's less and less cards available, so you will figure it out. Uh, the aim of the game is to um, get a letter to the princess. That's the theme. So you all start with a card that shows who's currently holding the letter for you, um, which can start from a lowly soldier all the way up to like a priest, a knight, the king, and then the princess. And they've all got like higher numbers. And I think mm -hmm. the princess is the highest. And um, essentially, you've got to try and uh, either knock out the other player. And there's usually only, I think, can I play this with four players, Max? I think so, and yes, you usually right. knock out the other players by guessing what card they're holding. If you've got a soldier card, you can like arrest them or whatever. Like Pete's got the priest card. And if he has, he gets knocked out. Um, or at the end of the round, if there's still more than, you know, two or more people left playing, then it's whoever's got the highest number wins. So that's usually the princess. If anyone's holding that card, wins mm. the round. it's really clever. It's really simple. I could play this one with my family too. And it's literally like a, you can get like several rounds done in about 15 20 minutes and then just see who's won the most rounds so yes perfect. um i remember remember during the pandemic um we'd often during lunch breaks at work just um you know, i would fire up the steam version oh yeah uh, which worked really really, really well i mean play yeah. like like maybe like 
three or four games over the span of, of my hour lunch break. And yeah, no, it was really, really good fun. And it's just so easy. Not easy. It's just so interesting. So I should say, um, like just trying to figure out what people have and um, trying to figure out what options you can use with, with the cards that you have. Uh, Cause I remember yeah. there are quite a few really, really good combos that can really uh, either be very, very defensive for yourself or, or um, can be be good for like taking out other players, but there yeah, are also there's the handmaid or the priestess that raises like shields. So quite often, yes. as soon as we get them, we're like shields. <laughs> so yeah, you, yeah. you can't be targeted for one round, basically, like a running meme we had. And there's also um, I think uh, a few combinations as well uh, that can be quite detrimental. I think I can't remember. I mean, I think the very, very, very first time I played the game, I think I got the princess card, and then I got another card that I think forced me to discard my hand. Yeah, which meant I discard the princess, which of course means I instantly lose. And yeah. I think there are a few others. I think it's like either the I think the king, and it's not the handmaiden. It's like the baroness or like the friend of the princess. There's, there's different versions of um, yeah of letter, and one of them I played is got the baron, and it says if your total hand strength is over twelve points or something, mm -hmm. you lose the game, and um, you're only allowed two cards. But if one of them is the princess and she's strength eight. You're yeah. going to be in trouble. <laughs> so if you're holding the princess, you're pretty much knocked out. And if you lose the princess for any reason, uh, mm. then you're knocked out as well. There's loads of versions of this game as well, which yes. I need to check out. There's like Batman Love Letter, yeah. which the theme sounds <laughs> ridiculous. Um, that might be worth checking out. Um, can't spend too long talking about it, though. So, Gregor, have you played Love Letter before? Just out of interest. No, I've never played it. I know you guys played it a lot over the pandemic. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm warm to it. I'm not. I'm not against the idea of playing it, but I have never played it before. Hmm. That's fair enough. Okay, well, uh, we probably don't have time to do guesses anymore, guys. So we're <laughs> get right. these, we could easily stretch these episodes to an hour long, oh, can we? Like, these yeah. days. Um, so, uh, Pete, what would be your number two? So my number two actually came up earlier. Uh, it is in fact um, bang. But as I think Dan suggested, it's kind of maybe a bit on the longer side. Um, in fact, yeah, it's, Greg, it's a weird Greg's... kind of category, isn't it? The light yeah. social deduction games, because they're, they're not too heavy. They're easy to learn, but they tend to last about an hour. I find roughly they're like I think... 45 minutes to an hour, would you say? Yeah. For a game of bang? That's assuming depends... that they, they don't like drag it out by healing constantly. Yeah, there is that I was going to say because I think there have been a few times where I've played games like that where it maybe lasts only you know like half an hour or so, which makes you think, oh, it could be a good filler game. But then, as you said, depending on the strategies, if people know the game well enough, they know mm. when to keep peer and um, when to sort of write, when to play the more defensive cards. It can really stretch it out. Um, I think Munchkin is another good example of that, which we've discussed in a prior podcast, where if you know how to play Munchkin well, you can sort of like take a 15-minute game and make it, or 30-minute game, I should say, and make it last an hour and a half. And I think Bang's in a similar vein. So perhaps Bang should have been on my honorable mention. Um, but yeah, I mean... You can still include it if you like. Just uh, yeah. tell us what you'd like about the game, Pete, because it's still um, I love the theming, um, and I love just how brazen people can be in it, because there have been quite a few times where it's like, okay, I know who the sheriff is. I'm an outlaw. Um, I want the sheriff dead. Um, and oftentimes I've seen it where one outlaw will be very, very open. Perhaps maybe to like show the other outlaw, hey, I'm on your side. You want to protect, you want to side with me. But then maybe they'd be a bit more subtle to try and pretend to be the deputy. And I kind of just like going, um, you know, once I get that like, development, because the thing about Bang is um, everyone's, everyone's base distance is one. So I can shoot the person to my left and to my right, but to say the sheriff is like three or four seats away from me, I can't shoot the sheriff until I've either A, gotten a better gun, or B, the people next to me to be taken out. So if you example, have to shoot through your neighbors to work. Exactly, out, yeah. And it's, a, it's, it's a sorry. really interesting, sorry to interrupt you, go ahead. No, it's fine. Um, it's, it's a really interesting, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I can edit this out. It'll be seamless. Yeah. <laughs> right, you finish your point, Pete, then I'll do mine. Yeah. Uh, there have been a few times where, uh, for example, I'm um, sat next to my fellow band, uh, th yeah, fellow bandit, and I'm like, I need to get to the sheriff. I need to get through the bandit. It's like, sorry, kid, nothing personal. Bang, 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 and you're dead. Oh, you're the fellow bandit. Oh, that makes us a bit more awkward then. <laughs> no, nothing personal, kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a it's an interesting game. Just to very quickly cover the aim of the game is everyone gets given a hidden loyalty card apart from mm. the sheriff. Um, there's only like a couple of different roles. You've got outlaws, which are usually the majority, mm. and their aim is to kill the sheriff. They all win as one team as well. So even if they die individually, if the sheriff dies, they win. And so mm. so typically, like I said, Pete, you, the, the best outlaw strategy is to have an overtly evil outlaw trying to whittle down the sheriff. And yes. then hopefully... 
the un- one of the undercover outlaws can just kind of finish them off. That's kind of the A game. Uh, you've also got the deputy, which kind of um, the sheriff apparently got so drunk, can't remember who their deputy is. <laughs> so the de- their deputy is trying to keep the sheriff alive. They still win, even if the, de- uh, the sheriff, uh, if even if they die, if the sheriff mm-hmm. wins, they win. And then you've got the renegade, who's kind of a balancer, who basically wants to be the last person standing. So they want ultimately to be a showdown between them and the sheriff. And then if they manage to kill the sheriff, they win. Yeah, it's a fun game, and I think it's a social deduction game. It's it's you don't really need to take seriously at all because people are yeah. they're hidden loyalties. There's no if you get discovered, who cares? Just shoot the sheriff. Exactly. <laughs> it's, yes. it's it's such a light game. Um, in fact, it can go on too long, and pe- people play it like Risk, and they're like being really strategic about mm. hoarding all their resources. No, just go shoot and everyone. It's the Wild West. There yeah. is <laughs> one expansion I played, which I think gives dead players a role, which is fantastic. I think I remember one time playing it, and I think the game went on so long. I think half the dead players just went and played another game. Yeah. But it did extend the. But it did also extend it. But I think the one thing I enjoy is watching people just throw insults at each other. I think there was one time we were playing a couple of months ago on TTS. And I think we had like the renegade and the and the deputy sat next to each other. I think it was uh, Shane and uh, Bohemian, and yeah. they were just slinging insults at each other nonstop. Yeah. Accusations. Both of them tended to be the deputy, weren't they? Yeah, I think they both tended to be the deputy. And, and the just... sheriff didn't know which was their actual deputy. Yes, I, I was <laughs> laughing the entire time. Um, another thing as well, I found quite funny was I think my fellow bandit hadn't quite figured out I was I was also a bandit, and I was on one hit point left, and they were like, "I shoot you, Pete." I'm like. Are you sure about that? It's you, deputy. So you, sheriff, and me. I'm on one HP. I think I was after that person. If you shoot the sheriff, we might kill the sheriff. Now I'm shooting you, Pete. Okay. Oh look. Yeah, I'm that person didn't have the best strategy in mind. They yeah. basically just killed yeah. their outlaw partner for no reason, exactly. and then got yeah. shot themselves by the sheriff. Yeah. I think didn't we talk about this? We talked about this in a recap, didn't we? But Possibly, yeah, there's, yes. there's lots of fun moments in there. Uh, oh, bang. Yeah. Please feel free to check out any of our previous episodes. <laughs> <laughs> we might even do a spotlight on it one day if we haven't Ooh, already. We should yes. That's, this episode like number ninety three or something. I need to start including the uh, episode number. Well, we'll Gregor, I'm sorry to. Uh, <laughs> 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 we we could talk far too long, guys. Uh, what well, what's your number two, buddy? Um. Yeah, I've been literally been trying to come up with this on the fly. Um, I <laughs> think my number two is probably uh, a little game called Burger Battle um, because oh. it is simple and it basically does what it says on the tin. So, again, the idea behind it is each player has a burger with uh, different ingredients that they need to assemble to create the burger, but it's kind of a take that game so all the other players can steal ingredients from your burger or they can Mm -hmm. change your burger to make it more complex to make like they can make you uh, put in more meat for example and all that sort of thing um yeah it's very simple it's very competitive um the illustrations are good and it doesn't take very long yeah it's a lot of fun wasn't again another one I haven't heard of, so I've checked yeah. it out. And now I'm talking about burgers, it makes me hungry. <laughs> so, actually, makes me of the old arcade game as well, Burger Time, I think it was. We had to like walk along these ladders to like knock burger parts down. Uh, but I could talk about retro games, yeah, with these, but yeah, sorry. Well, um, okay, yeah, no, it does, it does have that sort of vibe of mm. the old style games, the old style, like re- even flash games where like. You are yes. serving at a restaurant and you've got to get yeah. all the customers coming and you've got to fulfill their order. It has that vibe, but ultimately mm. you're only making one burger in order to win. Yeah. But as a result, it means that it doesn't take very long and it's a pretty good filler game. Yeah, well, that's, that's what we're it. after. <laughs> Reminds me of where we play, I'm playing a lot of Overcooked at the minute on the PlayStation with my son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just kind of getting these orders out, quickly chucking them. Yeah. The Literally dropping them on the floor, but never mind, throw them at the customer. Every time. <laughs> Five um, second rule. Yeah, definitely fine. All right, well, uh, we'll go on to mine quickly. I'll be quick, just in the interest of time. We have already mentioned it. It's a coup. Yeah, number, good call, good two. call. Very nice little bluffing game. It's set in the Resistance universe. So you don't, mm. really, need to, don't really need to know the plot. <laughs> um, you've got... Um, I didn't even realise there was a universe around the Resistance. Yeah, they've got like an yeah. expanded universe. It's like basically uh, the Resistance game is set. And there's like... Uh, well, a resistance to an oppressive regime. And um, in this game, you're playing as the bad guys. You're like the noble, evil people mm-hmm. at the top of it all. And um, you, in amongst all the chaos of the rebellion, you're then trying to seize power for yourself over the other nobles, essentially. There's the plot. <laughs> uh, but in gameplay terms, um, you get two cards, and you keep them to yourself face down, but you can look at them. 
uh, but they're just in front of you on the table face down. And these cards uh, give you abilities, but they're also essentially your lives. And what you can do with these abilities, you can claim uh, to do an ability, and it doesn't even matter if you have the card or not, you just claim to do it, and then you can get the, 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 whatever, the tax or whatever, get, get whatever the power the card gives you. Mm -hmm. But if someone calls you out and says you don't actually have that card, uh, then if you were lying, you lose a life, but if you tell them the truth, they lose a life instead. So it's kind of a for example, I could have two cards. One says the Duke, which gets me money, and then one says the Ambassador, which lets me swap cards, something like that. Mm. I could say, I have the Captain, I, even though I don't, and I, I steal two coins from Pete. <laughs> so then Pete can go, I don't think you've got the Captain, because he could be holding two Captains, and there's only like yeah. three. There's only three in the whole deck. It's a very small deck. Yes, there's um, three. I thought it was two, but yeah, there's three. Yeah, there's, there's three of each card. Um, so the, ma the maximum you can hold is two. And then we'd have like a standoff. And there's other cards as well. I won't go into all of them. But it's a, it's a fun little bluffing game. Um, people tend to knock each other out pretty quickly. But if they yeah. don't, once you get a certain amount of money, you can instant kill another player pretty much. So that it does have like a time limit on it in that regard. Um, yeah, fun bluffing game. Mm -hmm. Takes about, I'd say about 15 minutes a game. Yeah, I think the only thing I was going to mention was what you said uh, when, when if you if you win the debate, for lack of a better way of describing it, um, mm -hmm. you then have to shuffle. I think is it one? Yeah, you have to shuffle the. So if I contested Dan being the Duke, he was the Duke, and he showed me I lose a life. But then Dan has to then shuffle that card back into the deck. Oh yeah, so people never then, know one hundred percent what you've got. Yes, uh, and it's also worth probably noting that once you actually lose a life, so say if I was lying. I would then have to turn one of my cards face up yes. permanently in front of the table. I can no longer use that card, but people can see that's been removed from the selection. Mm. So if I did have a captain or an assassin or something and I placed it face up, you know there's one less of that card amongst everyone else's hands. And there's only three of each in total. So Yeah. yeah. Cool. Right. Well, we're going to very quickly rapid fire our honorable mentions. So, Pete, what were your honorable mentions? Uh, my honorable mentions, uh, I guess Coup, which I completely forgot about. Um, <laughs> Avalon Resistance, uh, but I think it kind yep. of falls into the same um, the same sort of vein as um, Bang. Bang. In that yeah. it, it can be quite good fun. Uh, sorry, they can be quite they can be quite short, but it depends on how um, how defense people get. Um, I will admit, though, part of my fun part of the fun of Resistance is just watching a few people wind each other up. Um, <laughs> I think if Dan's evil, he likes to go on a mission with, with specific people and then play a fail card purely to see them rage and there have been a few <laughs> times where i don't fancy playing resistance but i'm just i'm just a, a bit just sat with a, with a ton of popcorn watching the rage it's part of the fun i think yeah um, there is there is one player i particularly like to wind up because uh, <laughs> in the resistance you have people go in on a mission yes. kind of thing and then if you run on a mission you could play a pass or a fail card depending if you're evil or good uh i always play a fail card when i'm with one certain person and it's just so funny <laughs> if i'm evil of course i follow the yeah. rules but yeah um yeah it's, it's a good shout out that and i don't think that suffers the same problem as bang quite as much because there's no health or anything there's literally True. just just five rounds and then it's over. true yeah it's best, best of five wins yeah i think it's i've not played it in a while uh but yeah no that's fair and my other honorable mention is deep sea adventure ah there you go cool Excuse me. um the only thing i'll say about dc adventures i've only played it once uh -huh. i think it's got i think it's got the the perfect um vibe of being a filler game um and particularly similar with the other orange games i played at the um at the fourth event but this game i need to play a bit more so we'll see we'll see after a few more plays i'm glad, I'm glad you like that game because gregory yeah. introduced me to that and that was yeah. really cool a really fun little simple game but really addictive oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I think as i said on the, on the monthly recap i was surprised at how quickly that game ended and how quick and how difficult such actually score so definitely keep to play it particularly with more players i imagine it's going to be a lot harder with more players um but yeah no def and I, I want to check out more of them i because i know we played two oink games at um the the uh, the may the fourth event that i really really enjoyed and but again my, my delirious um state i can't fully remember what they were called so I'm gonna have to do a bit of googling <laughs> exactly yeah there's also well, the hazel coffee and dr pepper so I need well, to sort of um, look, those on, look up those games even on Amazon. Okay, well, in the interest of speed, we'll have to do move sure. on to Gregor's honorable mentions, if that's all right. Do you have any you want to check out before the number one, Gregor? Yeah, um, I would have put Deep Sea Adventure on my list, mm -hmm. apart from I thought it would be unfair if it was entirely made of Oink games. Um, <laughs> 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 what might be coming? A little bit more might be coming for number one there. Um, 
the other ones, I've, there have been a couple that I've been playing uh, recently, mostly because this is the sort of thing that Chris sends me for reviewing for the website. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been uh, at UK Games Expo. I got to play Crumbs, which is the upcoming, uh, it is literally called a sandwich filler game. Um, mm -hmm. in, uh, that's coming out by Minerva. So a the same of, guys. A lot of food based games with you. Uh, Gregor, I, was I am getting game. hungry. Yeah. Let's just get another hour. Um, that's a bit uh, unlike Burger Bell. That's as far as I can tell. I need to I play it a couple more times, but it's a bit more sort of puzzle oriented. And the idea is that it's actually more similar to Overcooked. So uh, you can play it either one or two player. And the idea is that you can, uh, if you're playing it two player, you have to move the ingredients between each other, like you're at two separate mm. ends of the kitchen in a very similar way to Overcooked, which you mentioned earlier. Um, nice. Peruke is another game that, uh, another filler game that i've been playing recently that's quite uh cool basically the idea is that you have uh, each player has two sets of discs one to six um one has a they have a safe side and a vulnerable side and then basically you're just rolling dice to try and make your um opponent's discs uh, vulnerable and then once they're vulnerable if you roll that number again you can take the disc and add it to your score um and basically you can play really i think technically it should go on for a couple of rounds but realistically you can play as many or as few rounds of that as you like um and it adds up really nicely and it builds the tension because as you mm -hmm. start to remove discs actually the number of numbers that you can get to actually start stealing discs off your opponent goes down so uh, it yeah. does it's actually quite well balanced and it uh, defines itself pretty well at the end um uh, yeah, I would have put Deep Sea Adventure on my list. I've already cool. said that. Uh, and the other one off the top of my head would be uh, Stadtland Anders, which is uh, German. And I don't actually think that the game has an English name, um, even though it's available in English. Um, but the idea behind that is that you are provided with, off the top of my head, it's four or five different categories. Um, and then each round you are given a prompt where you're supposed to filter that particular thing. So, for example, you might have a prompt of, you know, say, a celestial object um, or an animal or a location. Um, and those are, your, those are your, your prompts for everyone. And then for one particular round, you might be given one that is a... Um, uh, prompt something that applies to those prompts that only has four letters or something that is cold for example um and again the idea behind that is that you have to write down something that would be on that particular round you have to write down something that, was, that is cold that would apply to all of those categories that have been drawn out and your put your reward is points for a coming up with them and b coming up with unique ones so coming up with things that aren't things other people would say so if you had an animal and it was four letters um everyone might say bird or fish for example those might be very common letters but if you went common answers but if you went for carp instead as a as a type of fish then that'd still be a valid answer but you get more points for having a unique one so yeah i i quite like that it's quite a fun game to play in a group that's pretty cool okay so before we do our number ones uh gregor do you have any last honorables just a rapid fire out there Yes, my very final one would be something that hasn't even come out yet, but that I got to uh, see a little preview of at Expo, uh, UK Games Expo 2023, and it's sort of stuck in my head because I think it's a really interesting idea. The game is called 21X, um, and it's by Naylor Games, um, who I also need to email so I can try and have a review copy. But okay. the idea behind it is that it's basically blackjack, but with maths in it. Um, the reason that I find it really interesting is because I know there will be a group of people who absolutely hate it, and there will also be a group of people who love it. But the idea is that you have a, you have there, there's algebra in it. So actually, you you're trying to make twenty one, but also the cards have algebraic values, which obviously can change. So the value of your cards can change throughout the round in order wow. to try and make up twenty one. Um, but also okay. there are certain things that can result in negative values as well. So you can't ever be totally bust. But yeah, it's an interesting twist on Blackjack, I thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see that being a really good filler game. And I'm really looking forward to, I think it might be being kickstarted later this year, but it's definitely on my radar as an interesting filler game coming up. That sounds like it could qualify for one of the nerdiest mm -hmm. games as well. They're getting maths and education. into a game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah.
Um, yeah, so yeah, that's 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 a good yeah. suggestion there. Uh, I realized we messed up the format a little bit. Usually, people uh, we do the honorables and then the favorites, uh, but we messed that up. So, I'm just going to go on to my honorables if you like, and then we'll do yeah, that's our fine. Uh, grand winner. <clears throat> okay, my winner. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna have a quick drink and I will edit this bit out. Let's get a meet for a second. <laughs> okay, so, uh, my honorables, uh, which I was gonna chuck out there very quickly. Um, I was gonna say fun employed. But employed. Yes, yes. So, okay, mm. It's kind of replaced cards against humanity. Me feeling me a little bit. Uh, it's a bit, you know, I feel, I feel it has a bit more replayability, as in the it's the mm. humor is more based on the actual players and how they interpret the cards, rather than just saying funny buzzword number seven two four that creates a laugh whenever people say it. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> <laughs> my main criticism with, I mean, I love cards against humanity is for mm. what it is. It's just a simple party game. Um, but <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice again. <clears throat> Um, but uh, this one doesn't really have that problem because it, it kind of mm. um, you in, you're doing like an interview for a job, and um, the the funny cards of the the skills and which are usually horrid, hor horrendously inappropriate skills, and you got to try and make a reason why they would be good for job number X, like a uh, a politician or a news reader, something like that. It's really funny. Um, yeah, I you, think oh. you've played it before, have you, Pete? Or I think, I think we talked about we spoke about it a few weeks ago, and I think. Uh, part of the appeal is the sort of like the improv nature of it, where, yeah. uh, like you said, you know, uh, you, you could have one skill that's uh, that can be interpreted by different ways by different people, depending on how on how like, they read it, how they interpret it, how they how they can react to it. And I agree that makes makes it a bit more fun. But I will also admit it's a game I've not played in a very long time. Yeah. Really, you need a refresher on it. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I'd love to play it again. Maybe next time we're all in person. I'll like, yeah, I'll hopefully, we all play it. Uh, my other honourable, and it nearly made it, but because it's kind of a bit of a Marmite game, I think, with some people, is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Mm. Five minutes a game. It's yeah. literally, there's a timer, five minutes, so you can't get any more filler than that. Um, I, the reason it's not in the top three, though, really, is because it's very chaotic. I think that some people might be put off by that much chaos, because uh, it's very mm. hard to actually plan ahead, because you, you think you have a role, but then it may change without you even knowing it, so you could and it, that might uh, kind of cause some people to have a um, kind of mind implosions, that kind of thing. But it's I, a fun game, and a, with a hilarious app. Yep. No, I agree. I think I've, I've, I've played with a few people, and their response has been somewhat similar. Like they can't keep track of what the change is like. You know, one minute they're this role, but then that person says they're that role, but that person says they're another role, and it's just I think that's kind of like like um, confuse a few people and sort of put them off a little bit. So yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's. I, I actually I hadn't considered that actually. So that's actually a very very good one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can maybe, maybe nick that's one of my own honorable mentions. Mention, picking back off, picking back off you, but but yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, and with the right crowd, it is hilarious. Mm. Can't go wrong with really. Yeah. Okay, well we're going to do. So I feel like there's not always a difference. There's not that much of a time difference between playing something that's slightly longer but provides a much more in depth game like your deceptions and stuff like that mm. but actually sure. you might as well play a game that is a bit more fully fleshed out and easier yeah. to understand yeah i mean this is basically i just to find this oh we've got 20 minutes before play number x gets here let's just do a couple of games of werewolf yeah you know? yeah I'm joking in there yep not bad not bad uh okay well we're gonna go through our uh number ones so pete what is your best for the game my best filler game is uh, Magic the Gathering uh, Game Night box oh. set. Um, okay. Again, that's another one that could maybe fall into the, does it sort of like, like slightly exceed the 20, 30 minutes? But I think once you've got a rough idea of how magic works and with how relatively basic these decks are, you know, it is you can usually like bang out a game in like 10, 15 minutes. And sure. I think may, may, maybe more if it's like uh, everyone be everyone. Because I think, like, like I covered, I think in the June recap. I played a game with, with my friend during my birthday, and um, I think you know, I think we were like he and I were done after like 10 15 minutes. Um, sure. I think maybe it was like him and I versus another player or two could have lasted a bit longer. And I think another mention another pair were uh, one player was teaching another, and that game lasted longer than ours. But yeah, I think it's I think it's a fun game and definitely, definitely makes me like magic, but 
more in the pre-built decks designed to fight each other sense, not the I'll spend three thousand pounds to buy that rare card that will become banned Obsolete in about a month. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> tournament, or tournament banned, that sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, the the power creep of the card. I mean, I play game nights. Brilliant. I love the pre-made decks. Yes. Uh, so you don't have any of the stress of always having to have the latest greatest card. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it can be a filler game. I mean, you kind of on the fence a bit there because uh, mm. it can easily go on for like an hour if you have like yeah. a really deep game with multiple players. But yeah. I used to fit that in a lunch break when um before the end of the world. I used to play Magic the oh, Gathering yeah. in the actual so office fun. with one of my colleagues. We used to fit it into our. Uh, uh, lunch break of an hour with, with time to eat as well so you know it's a filler game great choice yeah. <laughs> all right gregor what would be your number one filler game of all time cool i dropped it in a hint earlier that it oh. is an oint game and it is an oint game um it's called tomato tomato i don't think i have played it Dull people before. Okay. Um, I don't think it's one of the uh, oink games that I've uh, forced uh, Pete et al. to play when we've met. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the game is called the game is called Tomato Tomato, and the idea behind it is that you a player rolls a dice and it's one, two, or three. It's a six sided dice, but one, two, or three. Um, and the idea is that there are tiles, and they are to, ma, mato or tomato and uh, depending on whether they roll the one two or three each player has to put out one two or three tiles and then pronounce the word that the group is making oh no so the <laughs> idea yeah, the idea behind it is you might have tomato for example um if you've had a toe ma and a mato um but obviously that word, uh, the more people that you get around, the more complicated that it gets. Um, mm -hmm. And especially if it's the sort of filler game of an evening where you wear alcohol or other uh, social lubricants might have been consumed, <laughs> the uh, it becomes uh, very cotted very quickly, but it's a lot of fun. And even the people that I know who are the least rules absorbent um, really, <laughs> like they really get on with it they really find it fun it's great fun to play as a group and obviously it usually doesn't take very long you play as much or as little of it as you like because the rounds tend unless you have some people who enunciate themselves very well um <laughs> yeah someone loses. the idea is that the the round ends when someone fails to pronounce the word and then mm -hmm. uh whoever's running the game counts down from three and everyone has to grab a tile from the from the word that you've made and the winner is the person who has collected the most total tomatoes whether that's made up of different bits of tiles or tomato tiles in one go um yeah the winner is the person with the most full tomatoes uh, at the uh, end of the game um so yeah it's really really simple to understand it doesn't take long to play it's loads of fun i think it's a great filler game there's also a potato tile as well uh, <laughs> there's one potato tile in the whole, the whole deck and again it just serves to make the game slightly more complicated um and add in that element of fun to it but it's so light-hearted i think it's a, a great filler game regardless of how uh, how well people can how uh, sober people are feeling in terms of pronouncing <laughs> long nonsense words oh, God. I, i'd be out in the first round i think <laughs> that sounds really fun though I'll yeah definitely have to that, i think i'd go down with my family as well yeah it no, was, uh, yeah. kind of inverted comment gamers i'm sure they find <laughs> funny as well so it's pretty cool it gave me flashbacks to some of your drinking games I used to do. Like, um, I, won't, I won't go into too many of them, but but yeah, I was just thinking, you know, where was this game like 15 years ago when I was uh, out on the town and getting absolutely uh, wasted? Oh, that would have been loads of fun. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Young, free, and single, Pete. Yeah, young, <laughs> young free, single, and could take more than three beers without being knocked out for the evening. <laughs> Yeah, and because it's an oint game as well, it's a very small box, it's very portable. It is exactly mm -hmm. the same size box that you showed Deep Sea Adventure off earlier yeah. for those people watching this on the video. Mm -hmm. So yeah, perfect for you go around a mate's house with like with, with two with two six packs and that and see how long you can last. Oh, where was Brilliant. it a decade ago? <laughs> <laughs> but you do come up with some really interesting games, very good. So yeah, yeah, yeah to, definitely. He's all the Google, so thank oh, you yeah. for that. Okay, well, uh, for my one, mine's going to be a bit of an anticlimax because we've already mentioned it once. My number one is, drumroll, Skull. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so of course. Pete's number three is my number one. <laughs> I take it basically whenever I have like kind of a light games night, like a Christmas mm -hmm. or something, chuck in a game of Skull. Great way to start the night. <clears throat> 
we've already talked at length about Skull. It's a very simple bluffing game. And uh, yeah, everyone always loves it. So there we go. Well, I'm afraid we did end on a bit of anticlimax there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> um, the thing I'd is, like you were controlling you. it as well. You decided you should go last. I know. Well, I, I feel like it's polite for the, the host uh, to <laughs> be the last person, that the guests speak first, you know. But yeah. I guess, obviously, that completely ruined the dramatic structure of the podcast. <laughs> so I apologise to everyone who's offended by the uh, lack of a climax there. I subverted your expectations. <laughs> expecting a, an exciting reveal there at the end, and you didn't get one. If anything, I should apologise for taking your your grand uh, your grand reveal yeah. at the end of the game. I How think I saw Skull. Yeah, yeah, I saw Skull on my, on my shelf. I thought, ooh, I bet no one's going to say Skull. I'll bring Skull in. <laughs> so I was also going to mention maybe Spyfall. Pretty yeah, fun. but that can uh, last quite a while though, because I think when we played at your birthday, that lasted a good. Yeah, that's what why I didn't quite get it. Yeah. Same with Deception, Murder in Hong Kong, uh, that can mm. last anything from fifteen minutes to an hour. Depends how yeah. hard people are playing into the realms. I think you um, can strictly set timers with Deception, where you can mm. make it last less time, but usually for the fun element, you don't really want to limit it that way. Exactly. Well, I feel that was a good episode, guys. I do enjoy uh, the list, and it's always fun talking to you both. Um, so oh, yes. thank you for your comments and uh, game suggestions. Uh, as always, thank you to everyone Probably. at home, walking the dog, doing the dishes, whatever you're doing. Thank you for listening to our little show about board games and random geeky stuff. Um, did you want to do the plugs today, Gregor? Oh, shall I, go? Uh, shall sure. I wing it? No, go for it, Gregor. I, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't want to ruin your usual high standards for plugs on this podcast. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's but I would suggest that if people want to read reviews of some of the games that we've talked about, they might want to visit doalg.co.uk. Or if for some reason we also own the URL, diaryofalinkingeek.com, no one's explained to me why we do that because it would take so much longer to type. <laughs> um, you can also follow us uh, at Diary of Lincoln Geek on most social platforms, uh, apart from Twitter, where it's D of a Lincoln Geek because there's a character limit um, until Elon Musk decides that there isn't one we might change it um, and yeah there's TikTok and we're on Threads now, Threads is a cool new thing, you should follow us on that Am I it might still... to understand Threads? I don't know It's like <laughs> Twitter but uh, it's attached to your Zuckerberg Instagram but we, have an, we have an Instagram yeah Okay. <laughs> and expertly plugged there, thank you Gregor Yes, thank uh, you Thanks again uh, to Pete as well for my regular co-host there and uh, regular friend. Thank you very much. And uh, as always, everyone, always be gaming. Bye. Keep gaming. Bye. Have a great one.